Hello. Okay, so I know I promised a video last week, but then it just got away from me. First of all, the bag that I was expecting on Monday was delivered late in the evening, unfortunately. And then um, both my girls had colds and it was just a crazy week. So I just decided to wait and now it is Monday and beautiful day and I have time to film and I'm so glad because I've been looking forward to this. By the way, my name is Jane and uh, this is my channel. So the first thing I'm gonna share with you guys is what I promised in my last video, which is my newest bag purchase. And I haven't bought a brand new handbag in almost a year, I guess. Uh, the last one I bought was a um, Cezanne uh, straw basket bag, which I talked about in my last video. But here it is, it's not an unboxing because I opened it last week and I actually used it all week long. This is a Longchamp uh, Le Pliage in the size small from the Energy line. And this is actually a new current color called Sienna. And it's like, um, let me get in there a little closer. It's kind of a orange, but it's not like a bright orange. It's more of like a brownish orange color. As you can see next to my t-shirt, it's, uh, it's a little more subdued. And I used it all last week for work, and I really loved it. Um, you know, it's your basic Longchamp. Let's, let's see what makes this thing different, though. My other Longchamp bags are all larger, so I wanted this smaller size. And what's cool about this is that it has a long removable crossbody strap, which is awesome. And because these top handles can't really go on your shoulder or anything. The inside is just like that. And we've got a pocket on this, a small pocket on one wall, and then a larger pocket here that'll hold my phone. And uh, yeah, the zipper is really cool. As you can see right there, when you close it, it um, has this silicone strip that kind of covers the zipper completely. I'm not sure why, I guess for waterproofing, if I'm out in like a downpour with this bag, but I don't know. It's kind of, it's cool looking though. So yeah, here it is. I will put a link in the description box if you want to check this out. It comes in a few other colors, uh, navy, black, white, and I think that's it, but I just like the pop of color on this one, and so I picked it up. It's a good work bag for me because for my job, I do not need to take a laptop with me to work or anything, so I just take my essentials, and then I carry my lunch in a separate lunch bag. So that's that. I also want to share with you guys my bag of the day, which is kind of my bag of the weekend. It's my Kipling Mini City Pack uh, backpack, which I've had for, I don't know, maybe like a year now. I use it a lot in summer and on the weekend because it's just so functional and durable and lightweight and it just holds everything I would need um, for the weekend. Like uh, I took it uh, hiking yesterday. We went, me and the family went to this local little trail that had a beautiful waterfall. And then after that, we went to a local cidery and had cider and pizza. So this is awesome, highly recommend this. So next, I wanted to talk about books. So this is kind of transitioning from the handbag part of the video <laughs> to talking about books. So this is a little notebook I have. Um, it's Leuchtturm. And in this notebook, I have, I'll cover this up. In this notebook, I have my uh, reading journal that I'm doing for this year. So the way I'm putting this together is I printed out little covers, the cover of every book I read. And then I wrote down information about the book, the summary of the story, my review and my rating for the story um, on Goodreads. And I'm gonna put my Goodreads link in the description box. If you wanna find me on Goodreads, I should be there. And so I'm trying to just make sure that I am keeping track of everything I'm reading this year, and it's just kind of fun to be able to look back. Um, so far this year, I've finished 10 books, but I think um, I'm 
working on a book right now that I think I might be able to finish today to make it 11. My goal for this year is to read 50 books, so I'm on track. It's approximately one book a week. And I'm going to share with you guys what I've what I've read so far in 2024. Um let me know if you've read any of these or if you're interested in any of these books. I read Euphoria by Lily King. I really like Lily King. I read her book, Writers and Lovers, a couple of years ago, and I absolutely loved it. I gave Euphoria four out of five stars. I read Death on the, Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. The first time I've ever read an Agatha Christie book. And I gave that one four out of five, too. I'm not going to give you, like, my review of every single one of these because there's there's ten of them. I also read uh, My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfag. I gave that one three out of five. Um, I just thought it was a little repetitive, but it was well written. I liked it. I read Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh, and I gave that four out of five as well. Um, I actually read Frankenstein whilst I had COVID in January. The original 1818 text, I gave that four out of five. I really enjoyed that, and it was a really quick read, well, especially because I was just sitting in my room for two days. After that, I read East of Eden by John Steinbeck, and that one got five out of five. That was my first five-star rating of the year. It was a beast, 600 pages. It took me over a month to read it, but it was awesome. It's a really awesome classic, obviously. And then right after that, actually while I was reading that, I read 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hanf, which is just a quick 100 page book. And I loved it and gave it four out of five. Then I read a book of poetry by Mary Oliver called Dog Songs. And it's just poems about dogs. And I read that in like an hour. <laughs> and gave it four out of five. Um, I've read Mary Oliver before, and I really like her poetry. And then I read The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. I gave that one three out of five. I did enjoy it, but there was... It was a little bit, to me, a little disorganized, but, you know, I still finished it, and I liked it. If it... If I give a book three stars, it doesn't mean I didn't like it. It just means that I didn't, like, love it but I still liked it, if that makes sense. If I give a book one or two stars, I did not like it. And sometimes that means I didn't even finish it. So far, I've not had any of those this year. And then the last book I finished was I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. I think I gave that five out of five. I hadn't filled it out in my reading journal yet, but um, that one was awesome too. And she actually also wrote um, 101 Dalmatians, which is kind of interesting. That book was, um, I Capture the Castle was like so original and the story just moved along so briskly and I really enjoyed reading that book. So that's that. And now I'm going to share my TBR for the next few weeks or months. These are just books that are like on my nightstand right now that I'm hoping to get to. We'll see how quickly I can read them. And they might, other things may come up, like I may find something else that, you know, moves to the front of the line. We'll see. So let's start with a book that I'm currently reading. So right now I am reading Visitors by <laughs> Anita Bruckner. And I would say I'm pretty close to finished with that. I'm probably two thirds of the way through it. And she has a very particular writing style that you have to get used to. It's very upper class, posh, British old lady, but I still really love her writing. I've read one of her other books, Hotel du Lac. I read this like many years ago. I kind of randomly checked it out of the library, not really sure what it was. And I liked it so much that I ended up buying a copy of it. This is a really great read. It might, it might even be her most famous book. I'm not really sure but I highly recommend. So in this stack of books, uh, these are the books that I am hoping to read in the near future. They're just sitting on my nightstand and I'll work my way through them. I'm gonna start with the library books because they obviously have a due date, so I have to go with them first. These ones I checked out on Saturday, so I have a few weeks. 
And usually when I go check out books at the library um, without having put them on hold first, I just see something that looks interesting to me and I grab it because that's the great thing about the library is it's free. And so if something doesn't work out or you don't like it, you can just return it. Okay, so the first one I grabbed is this one. Leslie F. And Jones. She is obviously an amazing comedian. She was on Saturday Night Live. I love her. She is an amazing person. And I'm so excited to read her book. The next book I checked out on Saturday is Spare by Prince Harry. Obviously, this was a big number one bestseller, big deal last year. I did not have any intention of buying it. Actually, I try not to buy books that I haven't read yet because it's a gamble. But they had three copies at the library, and so I just grabbed one, and we'll see how it goes. I mean, I don't know. Have any of you read this? What do you think? I don't really have any opinion one way or another about Prince Harry, except he kind of looks like my husband. Um, my husband is a ginger, and he sort of resembles this guy, except for, I think, Harry's eyes are closer together. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm going to see if I can read this. I have three weeks, but I might be able to renew it if, um, if I don't finish it in time. All right, next on my list is The Little Friend by Donna Tart. I bought this recently off Amazon, uh, secondhand, a used copy. I have read Donna Tart's other two novels, The Secret History and The Goldfinch, and I love them both a lot. And this, I believe, might have been... I can't remember if this was before The Secret, Secret History or after, but um, if you've read this, what did you think? I am excited because then I will have finished all of her books. And I don't know if she's going to come out with another book. It's been a really long time since she published, and uh, I will be really excited if she writes another book. This book, In Cold Blood by Truman Capote, I feel like I've tried to read this a couple times. Like I've picked it up and started reading it a couple times and then for whatever reason just put it down and didn't finish it. And I'm not sure why that is, but I want I really want to read I really want to finish this. I have um I pretty much know the story cuz I've seen the Philip Seymour Hoffman movie about Truman Capote um many years back and so I'm familiar with the story, but I have not read it, so I'm going to uh, put that on my, my to-do list for this year. And the last one on my nightstand right now is White Oleander uh, by Janet Fitch. I actually have already read this book once a long time ago. God, maybe like 20 years ago I read this book. It came out in 2000, I think. It came out a long time ago, and I remember I loved it. And um, recently, I was watching one of my favorite booktubers. Her name's um, Anna Wallace Johnson. I hope I'm not messing that up, but she's one of my favorites. And she talked about how she was going to reread this book as well. And she's actually such a great YouTuber. If you're interested in books or, I don't know, just interested in great YouTubers, then you should follow her. But uh, yeah, so I'm hoping I can reread this because... I feel like to have a, a really good year of reading, you should have a good combination of stuff you've never read before and then maybe reread a few things that you read a long time ago just to see um, if they feel any different. So that's what I'm going to do. So before I wrap up this video, I think I'm going to try to introduce a little end piece for these videos that you might find interesting. Let me know what you think. But I'm going to share with you guys a uh, fiction book of the week that I've read and a nonfiction book of the week and see how that goes. And these are going to be like books that I recommend to you that I own and are just on my bookshelf that maybe you'll find interesting. I don't know. <laughs> so we'll start with a fiction book of the week to share with you guys that I highly recommend. And this book is, of course, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Maurier? Maurier? Sure. I think it's Maurier. 
And uh, this is a, a classic thriller mystery novel, and it's just so mysterious <laughs> and dark and spooky. And there's so many twists and turns, and it's just a great read. I really love this one. If you haven't picked it up before, I recommend you read Rebecca. And it was hard for me to choose a nonfiction book of the week because I have a ton of nonfiction that I really enjoy. So I just kind of decided to grab this biography of James Madison. Uh, it's called James Madison. And a life... A Life Reconsidered. So this is by Lynn Cheney, Dick Cheney's wife. Yes, that Lynn Cheney. But this is an awesome book. <laughs> it is a great biography of James Madison. If you're a nerd who's into, like, um, American history, like me. And there's some, like, paintings inside. And uh, I don't know. He's just a very interesting president. His life was... Pretty crazy. For example, uh, he's our shortest president. I think he was five foot four. And he actually outlived every single other founding father of his era. I think he lived to be maybe, now I'm forgetting, in his 80s, at least mid to late 80s, which at the time was, was a pretty good run. He died in the 1830s, I believe. And uh, he outlived everyone in spite of the fact that he was sickly his entire life. Like when he was in college, he was always writing letters to people saying like, well, I don't expect I'll live much longer because he was always sick. He also most likely had epilepsy. And at the time, epilepsy, at least in the religious area of Virginia where he was from, it was considered, you know, you were possessed by the devil, there was a demon inside you, you know, that kind of thing was widely believed. And so because of the way he was treated due to his uh, medical condition, that's one of the reasons that he was so adamantly um, in favor of the separation of church and state because, because of the fact that the church could influence all of these laws at the time, they could for example, put him in jail or put him into an institution because they believed that he was possessed by the devil because he had epilepsy. So the church's influence in government and the law um, was something that, you know, James Madison was very much against. And he's the one who wrote the Bill of Rights. So James Madison, it's a it's a great book if you're interested in that in like early American history. So that's it. <laughs> Okay, so that wraps up my first booktube video or something. I'm not really sure yet. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you were entertained, and I hope it wasn't too long. Um, and I will be back hopefully next week with some new content, um, probably around books or maybe even about shopping. We'll see how it goes. I am really trying to stick to this low by year, but, you know, it, I can't. it's not easy. It's not easy. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. If you have read any of these books or uh, if there's any books that you're reading right now. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you in the next one and have a great week. Bye.